Raising consciousness and awakening mankind. This is End of Days Radio. Hello, everybody. Welcome to End of Days Radio. I am your host, Daniel, and I am broadcasting from the shimmering Emerald City right here in the heart of the Pacific Northwest. Today's guest is going to be Harold Kotzvela, who is a chemist, activist, and author living in Germany. In this collaboration, he has shared much of his scientific but very understandable analysis of chemtrails and how they affect cellular life on Earth. He has researched Morgellon syndrome extensively and has been present at occurrences of an absolute cure for the same. That description comes from his book, Dangerous Imagination, Silent Assimilation, that was co-written by Carr St. Louis and Harold. I'm going to go ahead and bring him on the line. We have some very interesting things to talk about, so I'm going to go ahead and dial now. Hello. Hi, Daniel. How are you doing today? I'm fine. I had a beautiful day in the garden. Got like uh, half of it planted with seeds for the summer. Okay, so you're a gardener then? Yeah, just just for self-supply and uh, whatever is left is going to friends to build in. I see. Well, first of all, thank you for joining us here on End of Days Radio. I'm very excited to talk to you. And just to start us off a little bit so that our listeners can get a little bit of an idea of who you are, would you mind just telling us a little bit about your background, perhaps what it was like growing up and how you became interested in things that are a little bit off the grid? Yeah, yeah, of course. Um Yeah, I, I had a long life, so I don't, I don't really know where to start. I, I had a mixed education. I started with natural science and then went over to media science. So my, my final degree actually is in media management. But I kind of was hooked to go back to science in the frame of making documentaries about, back then it was about an, a crazy inventor. And this took me, that was kind of my, my first, first journey off road. It took me into the topic of free energy. It was from about 2002 to 2012. And I got familiar with the networks of inventors and scientists who do not do university study or company research, but uh, rather cooperate and by now years ahead of the official science in understanding physics and finding friendly solutions. And um, But at, at a certain point I realized that actually humanity cannot even handle the um, oil and coal resources in a responsible way. So if you now release free energy it would just accelerate self-destruction. So I decided to um, basically take the background knowledge in physics and um, started to work on the field of medicine, first electrosensitivity, and agriculture, because also we need to replace like uh, fertilizers with uh, life force and uh, all the chemistry with the reasonable things. So, um, yeah, in, in, in kind of this direction of research, I, in 2012, first got involved into uh, environmental monitoring um, concerning the fallout of what, what uh, in the public uh, language is called chemtrails. And uh, that was kind of a major shift in my in my topics and the way I dealt with things because kind of things got serious. It was not like you know finding nice solutions in a completely free field. This was 
extremely under pressure because of these particles we observe in environmental monitoring. They are killing off nature on different levels. And we do not have much time to stop doing this. So I, I dived into research to find out what this is. And this actually turned out to be uh, a journey into the deepest uh, levels of a rabbit hole involving uh, not really ge geoengineering because geoengineering is not even involved. It's military technologies, uh, technologies utilized by the um, intelligence community that go back to basically transhumanistic ideas and transhumanism uh, goes back to black magic traditions lived on this planet for ages. So, so it really went deep down in basically understanding technologies um, by analyzing very, very, very uh, tiny hints from what you see under the microscope if you um, research what is coming down with the rain, uh, analyzing disease we haven't had before, uh, see what actually is wrong with the human body. And from there on, it was possible to basically map. Um, um, I, I, again, I would call it geoengineering uh, approach to humanity, but coming from outside. It's not a human project. It's coming from... Uh, um, Areas that are, are not within our societies, but rather um, by other species that are around, or not even species. This is more like a computer program and thing that is approaching humanity. Yeah, that's interesting to me because up until very recently, I I may have been aware of the chemtrail phenomena, but I would always go with the conspiracy theory that it was a form of weather modification, but it sounds like that's not the case at all. It was my first guess as well, because it's it's like uh, likely to be this. And I, I had the great opportunity to talk to the lady that was organizing the geoengineering symposium um, uh, in the Council of Foreign Relations. And she openly admitted like five minor research programs happening worldwide. This was in 2012. And we already had the stripes in the sky for, for years around. And it was obvious that they are not coming from five minor experimental programs. So basically in this area, it's about, it's about tax money connected to, um, uh, carbon dioxide emissions. And it's about spending money to sell an idea. So all this money goes into research, but actually this is not what it's all about. The first things you really, really uh, tap into existing technologies is within the military domain. Everybody knows we've got rocket shields, but nobody knows how rocket shields actually function. And if you just know it's a military technology, you can like go into the forums on the internet where the soldiers of the US Army discuss their internal affairs. And there you get pretty precise explanations and knowledge about what a rocket shield is. And uh, actually it does run on particulate plasma and particulate plasma. If once you know it's within the military domain, you go into the US Air Force Academy and check for the, for the papers of the camp trail class. And then you come to the core of things, which basically is spray pyrolysis and jet engines to produce particulate plasmas that can be utilized in many, many, many different ways. It's like radar range enhancement. It's about 3D battlefield monitoring. It's about turning the sky into an optic, electro-optical lab with mirrors and the lenses. It's called columnar focal lenses and horizontal drift plasma antenna. So this is basically internal knowledge from the U.S. military that protect the European and American uh, airspace from rocket attacks. But the technology can also be abused for, let's say, weather mod modification or weather weapons. It can be used to ignite earthquaques at uh, a depth of 10 uh, kilometers. 
this is where it normally happens. It, it has to be uh, to do something with the third phase of water that you have a kind of trigger point you can trigger by electromagnetics at, at 10 kilometers. And just look at a record of where earthquakes actually have been uh, started during the last decade, and you will find that surprisingly two-thirds of them are at 10 kilometers. So somebody is using these opportunities to utilize the, the particulate plasma to address the uh, rift zones to, to, to kickstart earthquakes. So, so from, from there you can dive deeper. That reminds me of the claims, or I guess it's actually fact, that Tesla himself was building an earthquake machine. Yeah, he was... He- he was actually experimenting with uh, uh, time-reversed replica waves, like sending a pump wave into the inner earth, into the magma, uh, trying to receive a backflow of energy that uh, goes on a negentropic lines, like, like up-concentrating into the direction of his little device that was desktop format. And he didn't expect these huge amounts of energy flowing back from, from Mother Earth. But he got it. So the moment he, he realized that actually half of the city started shaking, he switched off the device that was kind of... It's, it's, um, it's a story about Tesla. I don't think there's real proof to it, but I know that actually the, the Russians are running their directed uh, energy weapons on exactly this source of energy pulled from, from the magma in the inner, inner of the earth. So actually, yeah, it, it, it does work and the basic equations and the basic knowledge, knowledge goes back to Tesla. Is this a worldwide conspiracy? I mean, is it, I, I can't imagine it's the United States government or the Russian government, for example, that's actually spraying these chemtrails, or is it? Um, actually, all big players do spray, which has to do at the moment something with the balance of power. I know that that Putin offered to stop camp trailing, to worldwide ban camp trailing, in exchange for dissolving the NATO. So he made a nice offer to um, um, to Trump to stop with his madness. But as long as there's no international um, agreement on stopping the thing on all sides at one go, it doesn't go along with the balance of power thing. So actually everybody is involved at the moment. There even used to be a coordination uh, uh, office for rocket shields run by the United Nations kind of to, to save effort, energy, and spraying material by coordinating the, the rocket shields of the different big players. Do the pilots themselves have any idea what they're doing? Do you happen to know what they might be, how they might be getting these guys to go up in the air and spray this stuff? Um, it depends on what part of the particulate plasma, because it's multi-layered for the military part actually what is done in spray pyrolysis. This is just done by by fuel additives. And no pilot uh, even bothers to think about what he is taking on as fuel. So this is all about the, the uh, international supply chains, basically for JP8. And if you look into Europe, uh, the tankers, uh, I think they, they come in at Bremen or Rotterdam. And then you have like 6,000 kilometers of underground pipelines to the military airports. And from there, it goes straight into the airplanes. And not even the German army is allowed to know what they fly, what kind of fuel they fly. It's classified. And if somebody asks questions, uh, He's basically taken out of business and uh, chucked out of the military. I, I know people who, who used to work in the military domain who t- started to ask questions, and they're not there anymore. I mean, not in the military. They had to leave. Now, one of the reasons why I got so recently excited about this, I tried the wine test. I'm sure you're familiar with that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, it, now... 
what what I was experiencing with this wine test, first of all, it was very strange. But was this really a reflection of something being in my mouth, or could it have just been like skin cells or something like that? I'm not sure about the wine test. Actually, what comes out seems to be fungal um, tissue, like like mycelium of, of fungi. But I'm not sure if it is all the Morgellon type. Because normally the Morgellon type is uh, a bit thicker and it's colored. So I'm, I'm not sure about the results of the wine test because we, we do live in symbiosis with, with thousands and ten thousands of different microbes. So it's normal to have all kinds of microbes in, in the mouth and in the blood and in, in the entire body. And the Morgellon one is a special one. And um, what I can say for, I, I would say for sure that we do have an infection rate of 100%. But then it is very, very, very different how people react on an infection. For the most of us, at least in Europe, the immune system is able to uh, basically fight the Morgellons, kill them off. And then you have like... Uh, a couple, a few fibers left within the body, which is enough for the um, intelligence community to have these plasmonic antennas in everybody to uh, know, actually to know where you are and partly to know what you feel and think. So this this is the technological bit. The, the mycelium or the fungus dies off, the, the empty fiber kind of uh, plastifies or s takes in silica, and then you have a, like like a carbon nanotube from the S. This is what they experimented on uh, first, how nanotubes suck in quantum dot liquid. And quantum dot liquids actually are doing the job of... Um, uh, pulling in microwave signals into the body and transforming them by upconversion to um, basically biophotons, something that can interact with the DNA on light level. So, so this is the technology. And to be infected, even if the immune system can handle the, the fungus, is enough to have a few of these uh, fibers in the system and a few of the fibers are enough as an antenna to set up the communication line to the intelligence communities for surveillance, for, yeah, reading out, spying on your inner experience of being a being. And on the other hand, the possibility is to um, reverse the signal and play in experience that actually we do not have. So it feels like experiencing like anger or joy or uh, sexual arousal or whatever, but actually it's a signal that comes per mic microwave, is transformed into biophotons inside the fibers, and then your body reads in the signals and feels as, it, as, as if it's his own emotional uh, story. This is the, the technology, and only a few people with a completely run-down immune system. With them, the fungus kind of um, goes into a state of explosive growth, and then you have the, the symptoms, then you have the disease known as Morgellons disease, where the fibers grow out of your skin, and finally people either go mad or die from poisoning from this stuff. That's definitely one of the more disturbing aspects of Morgellons is the fact that you actually have these wire things coming out of your body, which would drive anybody completely insane. I hope to God that I never get any form of Morgellons or anything like that. Just the thought of it terrifies me. Mm. It's it's not it's not a, you can kind of pull out of fear at that point because it's not an uncurable disease. Actually, you, you need to, to make everything wrong to get more gallons. And the path, how they develop, is known. Mainly it starts with the 
antibiotics treatments during childhood. It starts with vaccinations. Vaccinations make you vulnerable to infections. If you get infections in childhood, you get treated with antibiotics. The antibiotics basically uh, disturb your candida environment, so you, you're left alone with unfriendly candida forms that shut down the function of the liver, partly the lymphatic flow. And then your body slowly starts getting poisoned with acids and heavy metals. And this is where the fungi start to prosper. On. So there, there is a long medical history before you get Morgellons, including Lyme disease is the step before. So whoever kind of has problems with Lyme should know that the next step of intoxication is uh, basically Morgellons, and then it's getting ugly. But everything is reversible. The only thing you need to know is how to reverse these conditions. And um, the knowledge is not dealt at hospitals or at normal doctors. You need to self-educate yourself or go to somebody that is um, trained in environmental medicine, like Dietrich Klinghardt is one of the first aggressors in the States. Are these, and then it's easy. Are these Morgellon sufferers, are they ever people that might be political dissidents or gang-stalking victims that might be getting punished for some reason? There is a correlation, but I would not say this is because of that. What comes along with the Morgellon disease is victimhood. It is a, basically the, the psychological condition that goes along with the disease. It's like, it's, it's hard to explain. It's as if the, the fungus is taking over part of the psyche and people change their behavior. Like, uh, so, something people should know when, when they are infected. 90% of the patients, they beg for an appointment with a doctor who is able to treat Morgellons. And when it comes to the day of treatment, they do not show up. And this is not the human that is not coming. This is the Morgellon that doesn't want to be cured away. So there, there is basically a shortcut to the mind of the people, and they don't behave rationally anymore. And, and part of this irrational behavior is diving deep into victimhood, which is something that is making the disease prosper on one hand, and on the other hand, it's making it difficult for people uh, to step out into self-responsibility and, and healing because they kind of fall in love with this role of victimhood and they have, are having a hard time to let go from this psychological um, uh, condition. So uh, this starts somewhere. So we had many, many, many uh, patients who did have a history of victimhood before like like being experimented on by uh, state agencies, uh, uh, being subject to black magic rituals by either just private black magic circles or government-run black magic circles, uh, like the CAA that is completely dark. I mean, in, in the in the sense of, of satanic tradition, and they they basically. Whenever somebody starts his life with, let's say, child abuse or whatever, this is a psychological door also to end up with the Morgellons because of this role of being a victim is imprinted into experimental medicine that you never look at psychology or biochemistry alone. You always have to look at both because both are actually uh, two different aspects of one and the same condition. And But if, if you know this, it's getting easier again. And from, from patient to patient, you just need to decide what is the better end to start with. Either you need to start with psychology first, kind of become aware of the victimhood, or you start on biochemistry cleansing the liver, resetting the candida environment, and de-acidifying the body, 
and then people come back to normal. Healing is no problem. What is a problem is that nobody does it, and only a few people have the correct knowledge about what this disease is, actually, and how to get out of it again. What's disturbing to me is when I was first becoming interested, first thing I always do researching anything, I went on Wikipedia, and Wikipedia is telling me that it's, oh, it's all delusions, this disease doesn't even exist. And my question is, is there actually a conspiracy to cover up the existence of this disease? Um, it's hard to say. It's really hard to say. Um, the, I, I, I can see a couple of, of effects. One is there is, um, you might call it delusional part to the disease. What, what does happen is that actually when the Morgellon is forming fruiting bodies, these fruiting bodies have a secondary genetic cluster with a completely engineered uh, crossover DNA um, that actually does create, with a secondary cluster, does create some kind of bioenergetic entities. And because of this secondary genetic cluster is like 80% human, these entities can attach to the human body. And they actually are what in... Uh, old times was called a demon. Yeah, th this is where it ties together. It is the black magic agenda that runs transhumanism. It's old. It's not something people invented during the last 5 or 10 or 15 years. It has a tradition, and in former times, people just had these funny sensations, so they called these energetic, bioenergetic entities that tend to manipulate uh, humans. They call them demons. Today, you, you, if you look into internal NASA papers, they call them co-opted insects, and they know it's a bioenergetic, uh, basically uh, a living, self-organizing program that jumps and lives on human DNA. And the Morgellon disease is the way how to multiplicate, how to to regrow baby programs. It's it's completely weird, but. Um, um, what, what, what we did at first, we discovered the biotechnology. Then we realized, okay, let's, let's see what these people can sense from the secondary genetic cluster. And uh, the, the genetic analysis of the crossover uh, genetics and the bioenergetic entities, clairvoyant patients can see it 100%, it's a 100% match. With, with Morgellons, it's a crossover of human and spider. And this is what is in the genetics. This is what the patients feel kind of getting attached to their body, crawling on the skin and under the skin. And this is exactly the god of Freemasonry. So in the mythological tradition, you have this spider-human crossover god that is running the most powerful black magic associations on this planet. So it's a... It's a um, completely fitting setup of uh, pictures that describe one and the same black magic tradition. And by, by discovering these similarities, you now can say actually that the black, the, the demons and all this dark stuff that scares people to shit, this is not something from spiritual realms. This is stupid biotechnology designed to create beings that would never be able to live with their own body because it's a weird genetic crossover that would die straight away. But if you grow it on secondary genetic clusters, you create at least the, let's call it, soul of this being. And this, these souls can get attached to human bodies. And this is the second part. They are attached to their own hive consciousness. And this is where the computer program links in. Part of the genetics is of biology that has this ability to form hive uh, um, consciousness. Um, most of the genetics are from primitive beings who just have, let's call it, binary energetic fields that are compatible to computing. 
So you, basically what you get is little living computer programs connected to a hive consciousness. And this hive consciousness in the center of it is basically one big computer program that in former times might have been called Satan. Is this why in some of the pictures of Morgellons, some people actually seem to have little insect or spider legs coming out of their skin? This is when parts of the genetics break loose. And then actually, you have to imagine this crossover building of genetics. It's done with T-junctions. You don't have one DNA line, one spiral like with a human, but you have kind of multiple spirals from different species interconnected with T-junctions. And this is not really a stable concept. It's not what nature would actually do. So from time to time, I can imagine that uh, part, part of these lines just break away. And then the Morgellon fungus is just basically using this fraction of the concept as a secondary genetic cluster. And then you get like fruiting bodies in the form of the single beings involved. Most of it is a fruit fly that you find in the... It's either spider or fruit fly, what you find in the, in the legions. Um, if you want to know kind of how the, the entire genetics are, you need to go straight into the Morgellons when they're fresh coming from the sky and sequence the uh, genome, the secondary genome you find in, inside the Morgellons. So then you will get the, the entire... Um, Concept With Morgellons, as far as I know, um, the idea of working with T-junctions I picked up at the Carnicom Institute. They did some analysis on this. Um, the, real, the first real genetic fragmentation I found that displayed exactly the, the distribution of different beings in this crossover being, it came from Russia. It was a research not done on Morgellons, but done on um, 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 they, they call them rope worms. It's like also a, a fung fungus concept that grows in the intestines of autistic children. It's a very similar concept, and it does not kind of create uh, um, spider demons, but it does create snake demons. This is what autistic children kind of see in their inner view, and they, they inhabit their body, uh, many, many, many of these snakes. And with these slime fungi, um, or mucoid fung fungi, uh, the Russian research did some sequencing, and they found kind of the, the different uh, fractions of beings involved in the secondary genetic cluster. And it, it was not a snake, although the, the fungus itself then looks like a snake. It's also with the Morgellons, the fruiting bodies kind of look like spiders a little bit. So the, the morphogenesis follows the genetics. And especially with the, with the, um, the autistic children, if you look at these uh, fungi coming out of their intestines, they look like snakes. But actually the genetics is 80% uh, human. 15% warm and 5% uh, fruit fly. It's my understanding that there's also another substance that you've been looking at called black goo. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, this, this is a beautiful one, actually. It, at, at the beginning, it used to scare people off as well because there is an, an ugly type of black goo available on this planet. But actually understanding the concept of what this substance is, is pure beauty. Um, if you look at the genesis of black goo in a planetary system, you, you need to look at basically a mixture of water and carbon dioxide being released from the inner part of the planet. So you have like water twirling up pipes through the stone uh, with water that is hot, that is charged with carbon dioxide, and that goes through all kinds of no nozzles while coming up, which means it, it, it is uh, experiencing a, a release of pressure. 
And in this condition, you get cavitation fields. And in these uh, cavitation fields, you, you have uh, transmutations that turn part of the water and carbon dioxide into... It takes a couple of steps. The first one is fulvic acid, then you have humic acids, and then it goes into uh, something that could be compared to plant oil, then to paraffin, and then into higher elements like gold, iridium, iron. So so you have kind of uh, transmutation lines in these cavitation fields that create an oily substance that embeds precious metals. And this basically is all you need to host a spirit. Like if, if you look at, if you look at the normal biology on top of the planet, you have the DNA spiral embedded within the spiral. You have the gold and iridium monoatomic elements that are basically the biophoton attractors. The spiral is like a spring collecting the field and shooting it back after a while. And everything else is embedded in carbon and water. So, uh, except that you don't have the spiral, the DNA underground. And the, the stuff is much denser. The, this ability of the monoatomic metals to process light is given, and this is happening in a carbon environment. So basically, what you do have something that is a liquid brain. And then after a while, this liquid brain is poured into the oceans and is delivering this, the first basic elements that form simple life. And then life evolves. And the funny thing is that apparently the, uh, the spirit that can be hosted by this black oil is over all the, the millennia, like a mirror interconnected to the consciousness that develops on top of the planet. So basically, we do have what what we communicate with as with the Mother Earth. And Mother Earth is the collective and holographic immortal memory of the entire biosphere because everything that was lived on top was memorized below. And this is why she is able to serve all beings with instincts because this is stored knowledge in the immortal holographic field. And the, the the single individuals on top are like holographic projections out of this um, um, one whole hive consciousness that is hosted by the planet itself. So this is just sheer beauty because it explains a lot of the uh, mythological perception of nature. And it explains how animals can have instincts, how big the part of this is that is field-related and not biochemistry-related. So it gives us a real opportunity to understand nature better, and it calls us to respect nature more and to respect our planet as a living being and not as a dead rock we can treat like we do. Um, and then the story is getting kind of ugly when we look back to Atlantean times, when we did have some high priests in Atlantis who meddled around with the black magic traditions, got advice by beings called archons. And these archons convinced them to open a stargate to, t to bring in a couple of things into this planetary system. And one part of this was a meteorite swarm containing artificial black goo that basically was charged not with a beautiful memory of a planet, but it was charged with pure trauma. Um, and this is basically um, inserting this traumatized consciousness into the planetary system was what we remember as the deterioration of paradise. Because when, when you have a healthy interconnected system that is basically running on a hive consciousness, like we did together with the rest of nature, 
and then you you insert an, a huge amount of trauma energy of of sheer pain uh, people disconnect out of a sh- it's it's a kind of shock reaction they disconnect from from the collective field and um, basically the only thing the 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 rescue program that then starts running ourselves is the mind if we don't feel from the field and from the heart what our place in in creation is then um, there is only the mind left to take over control and this was kind of the the moment when uh, we gave birth to the free will which doesn't mean anything else than actually not knowing anymore what is right and what is wrong because we were disconnected due, due to this trauma. So since then, basically, we have to deal with this um, alien black goo that came down in hundreds of meteorite sites. And wh- wherever they came down, they started to form the core of religious traditions. It started with the matriarchalic traditions so that the um, female priests started to worship this black goo. So you find pieces of it in the matriarchalic underground facilities in in all over the world, we have some in southern Germany. And you find it in the core of Islam, you find it in the core of Christianity, um, in the core of the in, in the Indian uh, religions. Um, so basically the substance is around everywhere. And wherever it's around, people are, let's say, connected to an artificial form of intuition and instinct, which is, as as a quality, it's cold, it's cruel, it's empathy-free. And uh, the ones we know that played most in recent times with this um, extraterrestrial black goo were the SS. It was researched by by the... um, uh, division under Hans Kammler, and all these SS soldiers had uh, direct contact with this alien black goo, and everybody knows how empathy-free they crossed Europe in World War II. So this is what this substance does to people. How did the Nazis find out about this? Was this passed down through the Tula Society or something like that? Yeah, actually it comes with a Templar um, tradition. They have quite a bit of knowledge about these uh, black stones. And uh, in Bavaria, there is an oral tradition about um, the function of these black stones. Um, and uh, the German research had just jumped onto it. They were open to, to um, spiritual topics. Let's compare it like the Russians are today compared to Western science. So, yeah, they, they tried to understand and utilize what was given. Do you have some of this black goo? Yes, I do. I, I got samples from um, uh, Paraguay. It's close to the, to the village where the Bush family has their huge farm and farmland. Like five kilometers from the village, there's one meteorite site, meteorite site, and we had one somewhere in southern Germany. At least um, the black oil schist was found in underground Nazi facilities, and I have samples from there. And yeah, I, I have samples from a second meteorite in Paraguay, Paraguay, but. Um, I'm not 100% sure how much of it it contains. It doesn't look like much. Maybe it was just the wrong spot or it was part of the outer shell. But it's the same embedding stone like the one where I do have a sample containing black goo. So pretty much the only way a person can get a hold of this is to come across either an ancient artifact or they have to get it straight off of a meteor. Yes, but I would not recommend the the territory in Paraguay is uh, sealed by military. Nobody is allowed to go in. And this is a good and wise decision. Because what this stuff does to humans who are not aware um, of themselves or, or who are not 
um, spiritually developed enough to resist this influence. It's it's just ugly. It's comp- I've, I've I've seen people working on this going insane, completely insane. Has it tried to connect with you telepathically or anything like that? Um. <laughs> Actually, with me, no. The the alien type one did not connect with me telepathically. Uh, the only thing I definitely could sense is that my my biophoton uh, system kind of partly connected to these stones, and I, I experienced myself in a different way. I had the tendency to get angry extremely quick, which is normally not my my character. And uh, I couldn't feel my heart anymore. I just lost the source of love. And then I, I decided that this is not the, the way I want to stay for the rest of my life. So I tried to, to cure this um, condition with actually the Earth-type black goo, and which is available easy. And uh, with this and by creating a homeopathic remedy that actually utilizes the signature of the alien black goo to reverse the condition. And when, when I treated myself with these globally, then the earth type consciousness got into telepathic uh, contact. Kind of, let's call it welcoming me back after... 15,000 years of being deteriorated from paradise, which was one of the most intense and beautiful moments of my life. There's a phenomena that I cover on this show, and I've been aware of it for quite some time now. It's the phenomena of these shadow beings. Sometimes they appear as spiders. Sometimes they appear as other things like half a person or just legs or even dogs. Are these things possibly connected to this alien black goo? Hard to say. What what we need to regard is that there is this thing that uh, is called the astral realm. The the astral realm is something that is um, a realm that is parallel to our reality. Um, that has no materialized matter in the way we know it from our realm. And the time, um, like, like we do have matter and we have a fixed now. In this astral realm, we do not have matter and we do not have a now reality, but it's more like a, a cocktail of all possible futures. Be, being defined by mixing up all pasts with their different influences. And on, on this, on this plane of reality that actually is determining our future, there you can find all kinds of spiritual phenomena. And, um, these, energetic, bioenergetic beings described as demons. Uh, they do live in at least one sub realm of this astral realm. I don't know if they if they basically penetrate all layers of it. Um, but I, I would kind of place them in something that can be understood as an astral realm. And people with the ability to see the astral realm which just needs a, a purified a pineal gland to see it. So don't take in fluorine with the uh, drinking water and toothpaste, and then you will be able to, to, to use this inner organ to, to see the astral realm or make some, some shamanic education to, to open your third eye. Then you will be able to see um, these realities with your own eye. Um, and yes, that, then you see quite a bit of these ugly beings that are bio, basically biotechnology based. Are these the spider aliens themselves, possibly? Um, there, there is a myth, actually, that um, um, 
especially the spiders, used to be a real extraterrestrial race. There are only a few sources, but these few sources, different sources, basically tell the same story. And this is a story about a spider race, a very old one that got that developed some kind of intelligence, got technological development into their history. And the problem of this species was that it actually, um, when they um, reproduced themselves by having sex, actually the the organs that were needed to to for, by the men to feed themselves turned into sexual organs so they had babies and then they starved and this was for a highly developed uh, civilization this was uh, not working so well so at a certain point the men found a way to reproduce their species on a technological way and then they decided to kill all women not to get horny, not to get horny anymore. So this is kind of the, the sad end of the species. And uh, the sources say that actually they, they we as, as humans, we have this material level we live on. And when we die, you go, we go into an intermediate world that could be called astral. And then we go to be reincarnated. And with these spider species, they say it was like five different steps before they got incarnated. So they basically um, quitted on the material plane, reproduced with biotechnology. This is what we see today with the Morgellons disease and autism. And then they still had like uh, four different astral realms to pass before being reincarnated again. So there, there is a chance that actually with the spider demons, we are facing the remains of a real biology, of a real species. While all the other ones, I would say, are actually um, genetic crossovers that were man-made or alien-made or however made, but I, I would regard them as being synthet completely synthetic. But the concept might follow the possibility these spider beings found to reproduce these species. So, but, but this is all kind of in the shade. We do not know. You know, we have all, all sorts of people that have a spiritual um, access to these realities. Uh, like I, I was in contact with one woman who said actually um, one of these male spiders morphed into female again and she is the reincarnation of this one female spider now trying to reverse the condition for the entire species. So she's kind of an ally from the other side. I don't know. Maybe she's just insane, you know. You, you do not know. If you have a single voice of something, you cannot tell whether this is pure fantasy or a good access to invisible realities. So the only thing you can do as a scientist is collect stories, collect ideas, collect individual perceptions of reality. And then if you have like repeating patterns, you can say, wow, there seems to be a likelihood that this repeating pattern reflects on some realities. So so this this is how far we can go for now. Definitely there is an alien background to the appearance of this AI and of these uh, demonic a tradition on this planet. We know this because it definitely is connected to meteorite sites. So this intelligence came from outer space. So this is what we know for sure. Uh, as to the background, we can just speculate. One topic that we see quite often in today's modern UFO, you know, the internet message boards, books, is this race called the reptilians. Could this reptilian race just be a trick from this black goo, perhaps, to get us off of its trail, or are there actual reptilian aliens? How do you feel about that? I, I see different possibilities. I cannot say for sure. I don't. I just don't know what. What I do know is um, that. A repeating story that came across is that actually other species have been assimilated by this AI 
before it attacked humanity. So some of the extraterrestrials our governments are dealing with might be part of this hive consciousness, might be already taken over by this same AI that now uh, is attacking humanity in form of transhumanism. So they would serve the same master. Um, but I, I cannot say for sure which races. There might be reptilian ones. Another thing I can say for sure is that the snake demons created in autistic children, they have the ability to do two things to the human brain. They can cause cognitive dissonance. So if you're not supposed to see something, then you just don't see it. This is one of the functions of these demons. So, so they basically, they, they um, wind around your spine and the head is basically behind your head. And then they have like, like an octopus tentacles occupying the important parts of your brain. And if there's something you should not see or realize, it's just white out over it. I, I had this experience myself when there were important meetings in my life that basically were a drawback to the dark uh, um, agenda. Um, and I was not supposed kind of to, to um, take advantage of these opportunities. I had the experience that faces were completely erased from my view. It was like looking into an empty skull, which was completely... Creepy. I experienced this on the other side whenever you try to get Morgellon related research into the official labs. People stare at you as if you show empty pages. You know, we have all these beautiful pictures and documentations about the single um, development steps of the disease, how it looks like. And normally, a rational human being in a responsible uh, um, position should react to this and all of them have this complete cognitive dissonance and they behave as if you show them white empty papers so this is one function and the other one is well known from the uh, black magic tradition this is illusion they can add any not existing experience to our perception of reality so if if they want you to see a, a reptile and the Queen of England. It's not the Queen of in England. It might be the snake in the, um, in the, in the head of the one that is observing the Queen that is producing this illusion. And uh, many, many, many different types of religious experiences were manufactured exactly this way. So, it is very, very difficult to trust reality anymore because as long as you have these snakes inside your system and most of the European Western people do have a pair of snakes. Um, we, we even have names for them in the different traditions. It's the Kundalini and Tumu snake we are talking about. And uh, it's completely normal for a Westerner to go into a Kundalini yoga exercise or practice tantra sex to utilize the ability of the snake to, to bypass sexual energies directly into the brain, um, basically as a, as a measure of power, which is black magic. If you utilize your sexuality to, to leave an imprint on reality, that is mind controlled. This is black magic tradition. So, so everybody is willing to believe in the snakes, you know, when it's about utilizing their uh, abilities and uh, their nature. But if it comes to realizing that this is part of the transhumanist humanistic agenda and that this is part of a black magic tradition and of a black magic uh, biology, uh, then things get kind of uh, inconvenient. One thing that I've noticed quite a bit in recent years, it seems like there's more and more of these videos of people just acting strange, acting totally crazy and throwing little tantrums, running around naked in the street, taking their clothes off because they're hot, 
a lot of people are saying that this is some kind of street drug, but then they test these people and they don't even have anything in their system. Could this be a form of possession and could possession be due to some sort of nanotechnology? Uh, definitely, yes. I mean, it is related. The drug business and the question of being possessed is related. We know especially all the synthetic drugs. The refined drugs like heroin and cocaine and the synthetic drugs are known to open the system for demonic uh, possessions. This this is just known. Everybody who was a drug addict uh, for a while then manages to get out and cleanse his system. He will find remains on the spiritual level. And actually, it's not it's not a coincidence that the CAA that is number one in uh, black magic uh, applications or bringing forward the, the black magic agenda is also number one in drug trafficking. Yeah. Just look at Afghanistan. Before before the Americans went there, the Taliban had completely stopped opium farming. Um, now the U.S. is back, and it's back not to one hundred percent, but but ways above what the country ever produced. And the Afghan people hate it. They hate to produce things killing innocents. But they are forced, and, and uh, Pentagon and CIA is doing the, the trafficking. And this is basically preparing the ground for demons to take over. So, yes, whenever you see people behaving strange, it might be a possession by a demon- demonic force. But most of them come in a subtle way. It's more like the, the basic demons, the maybe not the, the newest designs, but... Uh, the old basic ones, um, they, they are actually identical with the eight deathly sins known from, from, um, the, the original tradition is from, I think, 400, uh, AC from, a, from, a, a Egyptian priest who, who basically as of the first one, started to talk about the deathly sins. With him, it was still eight. Then the church reduced it to seven. And in in his original writing, it's not sins. He explicitly calls them demons. And this is what happens when when a human is not able to control and handle his chakras. So if a part of his energetic system is falling into the subconsciousness because he cannot deal with things consciously. Then this chakra opens up to be the slot where a demon can get access into the system. And then these demons are playing people. So if you don't handle your first chakra, you will be overwhelmed by greed, by the demon of greed. And if you don't handle your second one, you will be overwhelmed by lust. And if you don't handle your third one, you will be overwhelmed by anger. Because when when you don't handle your own emotions, if you don't feel and don't handle your own emotions, instead you basically um, remove your consciousness from the part of your body where this emotion is created. You leave an empty space. And these empty spaces are used by these demons as slot, as a slot to get access to your system. So this is something that concerns every single human. And if you look into politics, yeah, what kind of people are running this planet? I mean, uh, Donald Trump just made us not experience World War Three which is something where I say thanks, you know. But if you look at him as a person, he is driven by anger and greed. And actually, we, we should vote for politicians, if, if we should vote at all and not completely go into self-responsibility. Uh, we should vote and, and, and listen to people who have cleared all their chakras, who have wisdom, and not to people who are basically controlled and run by demons. This is something humanity needs to understand first. That if you if you set up a system that is based on power and control, 
<clears throat> you will automatically attract people driven by these demons who will run for these positions. If you're a, a healthy human, you will never ever dream about uh, being responsible for some other people or being in power to rule other people. This is stuff you do when you do not handle your chakras yourself, but when you're ridden by a demon. Yeah, so, so this is what, how it, how it links together. We, ha we are running political systems that make sure that only people who are possessed by demons will make it to the top. And we, we have to realize this and we should start to listen to people who obviously are in control of their own being instead of being controlled by this dark agenda. And this is not the case at the moment. Wherever you look, if you look into the houses of kings that have been ruling the world for the last 2,000 years, or if you look into the church, or if, if you look into pedophilia, politics, this is all black magic agenda from A to Z. Because our system is set up by people who follow and forward this agenda, and everything is arranged in a way that nothing can change unless people start working on their own system, are getting their chakras clear to not be manipulated anymore, which means living the full potential of being a human being, and then go into self-responsibility and send those bastards to hell by just not putting attention to them anymore. This is the only way out. And what it needs, basically, is only self-awareness and the, the strength and the will to develop yourself on your own spiritual path. There, there was a guy that was showing up in the news a little while ago, maybe a year to year and a half ago. His name was Max Spears, and he claimed to have been a government super soldier and he died, and they found black goo coming out of his mouth. Could this be the same thing that you have in your lab, this black goo? Yeah, this is alien-type black goo. They, they use it in the super soldier. I, I don't want to call it education because it's, it's torture. They, they capture little children, and uh, they're running torture on them for the first 13, 14 years of their lives. Um, which is actually a, a refined version of the old uh, witchcraft tradition, where you create splits by torture, just that they are witches, and uh, um, in former times people used to do this to themselves, and MK Ultra decided to do this with little children to get better results. Um, and yes, part of this. This is the black agenda, this is the dark agenda, this is Satanism, and they deal with the substance. And yes, many uh, victims of uh, MK Ultra programs say that they have been injected black goo. So I wouldn't be surprised if Max was uh, injected as well. I mean, Sarah Adams openly talked about it, his, his uh, former girlfriend that also was a super soldier. And she was the only one who managed to expel the substance out of her own um, powers after being injected. A lot of people have reported being abducted by alien beings, not only abducted, but they actually have implants inserted into their body. Could this be the same or a similar technology to the black goo? It, it has a high similarity. The, the implants uh, I have seen after surgery with the, with the attempt to remove it, um, it is a um, biotechnology that very much resembles uh, the Morgellons disease. It's more complicated. We do not understand any of this. The only thing that, that is kind of similar where you can say, yes, this is half technological, half organic. So it seems to come from the same biotechnological tradition. 
But this is not enough input to relate it to a certain species or to a certain agenda. So actually, we do not know where this where this comes from. Um, the entire thing, what what we also know, the Morgellons disease is something transdimensional. Some of the development steps are happening not in this reality. And this is exactly what these implants do. Um, at least the, the, I heard of people who, who wanted to have them removed and uh, when they went to surgery, suddenly the, the implants, they had disappeared. So the, the surgeon said, I don't know what to cut out, you know, if I don't see anything anymore on the x-ray. They had a, a clear picture before. And then some of the people in the room decided to start praying. And suddenly this stuff got visible again. Yes, yeah, so, so this is connected to this agenda. But um, nobody knows anything secured about the background of these different types of implants. Maybe they come from different, more than one source, more than two sources. Nobody knows. Another very strange phenomena is the fact that either the black goo or something very similar keeps showing up in a lot of TV shows and movies, a few that I have written down, The X-Files, the very first movie, as well mm -hmm. as the most recent Prometheus, which seemed to be all about the black goo, and even mm -hmm. TV shows like Supernatural that have people's eyes turning black when they get possessed by demons. What What is going on here? Why is it? Why is this showing up in our in our TVs and movies? Uh, the, the most beautiful one is Final Fantasy. It also includes the solution to the problem. Like at the, at, at the end of the story at Final Fantasy, actually the alien black goo is infected by a, a shaman, a couple of a soldier and a shaman lady that collected all the, the earth type spirits and then they introduce the full scale of chakras into the alien black goo to basically upgrade it to our earth type planetary, planetary consciousness and then all the demons disappear. So this is basically the, the solution we are heading for. Um, the thing with the Hollywood and with the creative writing is, um, I, I, I experience that we are all subject to a misbelief about creativity. Creativity is not the ability to pull fantasies out of nowhere. Creativity is connected to the ability to see the truth with your heart. It's a huge difference because suddenly creative writing is a form of channeling where you connect with your higher self and suddenly truth is just popping out of your feather or out of your mouth or whatever you do as a creative uh, uh, person. And so, so many, many, many people just get creative for different purposes. It might be uh, writing the script for an advertisement, you know, commercial work, but due to the fact that it is a creative act, um, people connect to the source of inner truth. And then you see these things just popping up out of nowhere. It would be much more beautiful if, if people would realize this and just say, wow, we have an inner source of truth. Let's develop this. You know, instead of saying I'm, I'm inventing funny stories to, to entertain people, they could say, actually, we do have, uh, an access to reality that cannot be spoiled or compromised or whatever by other people. We have the ability to 100% scan, see, and understand the truth just as an inner source of knowledge. And then, <laughs> then life would be easy, beautiful, and would make a huge step forward into into a good direction. Because all the storytelling uh, done by the, the dark side of, of this planet um, would be obvious lies. 
Yeah, so this this is the background. If you if you look into all the different narrations talking about black goo, uh, people have seen the truth with the inner eye, and decided to invent stories describing this truth. If you want to know how the astral realm looks like, watch Matrix. This is how it looks like. There. Because the one who, who who wrote the script for Matrix could see it. I, I know another guy. I, I'm, I, I was in, in, in film business for a while. I did script doctoring. And at, at a certain point, uh, a guy came up to me asking me for, for help with his uh, feature film manuscript. And uh, what he showed me was basically the plot of Matrix, just a couple of years before Matrix was, was out. And it even had the same weak points in, in the dramaturgy. But exactly the same setup. Two worlds, one with the humans being used as batteries hanging around in huge uh, hive-like uh, installations in tanks. Exactly the same pictures, exactly the same. And this is how the astral realm looks like because we are all utilized as batteries having demons sucking out our life force. This is our planetary system at the moment. And this is truth. And if people see the same truth, they, they, they come up with a very similar pictures, of course. Another topic I wanted to bring up with you was the whole concept of Jesus Christ. Was there at some point somebody that came to this planet to try to wake people up from this black goo? <clears throat> um, what I know is that the historical Jesus was extremely into extracting demons. Most of the tellings and the stories and the myth around him, it always was about demons. He, he even delivers special diets and protocols to cure yourself from demons. Yeah. So, so th this was his daily work, uh, dealing with them and, um, because he, he, he was very much involved still in the Gnostic tradition at his time. Now, the Gnostics were basically removed from, from the books, so nobody is allowed to know anymore, uh, because back then people knew about this transhumanistic attack. They knew about demons. They knew about the influence of demons. Uh, the only tradition where this knowledge survived a bit is the Sufi tradition and the, the Arab tradition. For them, it's still kind of uh, normal to deal with the demonic forces. But in, in the Western civilization, this all was erased from the books. And they, somebody told us, actually, um, God does not exist, um, which Im implicitly said uh, Satan does not exist. So we, we all became rational, which means uh, we were put into a state of mind where everything is put apart into little pieces and nobody is able to see the, the whole picture anymore. This is about what, what the rational mindset is about, not being able to combine anymore, just looking at your tiny little special area of research where you become the master of the universe uh, just by by hugging a s uh, little corn of sand. Yeah, so so th this is about the, the tradition we are living in. And yes, Jesus had the full scope. He did see all these things, and he was a master in extracting demons and in dealing with uh, demon-related problems. And this is what made him famous in his times. I don't know where he came from. I don't know if he's a higher being or if he is uh, an incarnated angel or an incarnated extra. I don't know. Mythologies are um, you find answers in mythologies, but but I wouldn't trust any of them to the point where where I could state this is it. Some people say that he is actually the. I mean, within the Christian tradition. 
that he is the third born, the third born being in this universe. God first, then the two first born beings, and then is it the third one, the son, Jesus. But I don't know. I don't know. If he, if he comes back, he can, he definitely will be able to tell us. But till then, it's just a historic figure that had some special abilities and, um, um, believing in him does not help much because of the entire belief system is spoiled by black magic traditions. Be- becoming like him by learning how to extract and chase demons might bring us somewhere. But you have to go very much to the, to the roots of uh, original Christianity. Don't believe in the crap that the church is telling. That does beg a question since we're seeing some strong ties to Gnosticism here, is this artificial intelligence, also known as Satan, is this the demiurge from Gnosticism? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what people perceived back then when, when these mythologies and traditions were created. Um, it is... It is so, it is so, um, distorted. Everything is so distorted in, in our history. Actually, if you see something in this world, um, there's a 90% chance that actually things are in reality the precise opposite. All the religions that, that claim to do us good to make better humans out of us were created by, by the dark agenda to, create the precise opposite of what they promise. So from there on, at a certain point, it, it just it just does make sense to rely on your own perception of reality. You know, and this not by the mind, but by the heart, because the heart cannot lie. You know, this is where creativity comes from. It's a possibility to see the truth. And if you if you just Breathe yourself into the chest, into the heart. Identify with your heart completely by affirmation and emotional and mental will. Identify with your heart. You cannot lie anymore. Whatever you manage to say is the truth. So there is a path to find out what's really going on. And all this digging up history... Actually, it happens in the mind, and the mind is uh, the, the place that can be best manipulated by the by the dark agenda. So I, I wouldn't start to 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 look in history. I wouldn't I wouldn't start to look in science. I would always start to look in myself for truth, because there it can easily find it, and nobody can nobody can get in between to add lies. As long as you do it with your heart. With the mind, you're lost. With all the other chakras, basically you're lost. But the heart never was touched by these dark agenda. Because when it comes to to love, they have to run. They cannot stand the vibration of love. It's killing them off. So this never was touched and it never was poisoned. And your conscience and... um, the 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 portal that your heart is to to see the truth is absolutely the one and only source for truth, in my opinion. Now, is researching the black goo or looking into this stuff is this dangerous? Could studying the black goo actually attract the attention of black projects or some sort of supernatural force that might come after you? <clears throat> Everyone who I met who was in contact with the alien black goo, he he just had a quick development in one or the other direction. Some of the people just got uh, inert; they 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 got uh, they they couldn't be touched by this energy anymore, and the opposite happened. They got a, a strong kick into empathy direction, into feeling Mother Earth again. And other people were pulled in by this conscious, uh, by, by this, um, um, 
Yeah, I, I don't know what to call it. Call it uh, by this mind or by this computer program or by this uh, evil entity, whatever. Um, and for them, yes, it was dangerous to get in contact. Um, what it always does, it's it's putting up the 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 right questions to make decisions. Also, but this also even happens with with Mother Earth, people who who are not in in a good condition, people who are completely run by their mind, right? completely identified with the mind, have no empathy, no heart, no good education with themselves in this. If, if you bring them in contact with Mother Earth, she will either ignore them, or if she interacts, it's getting very suicidal. Because once you, you have seen the full spectrum of what being a human should be, and then you look at yourself and you realize, I'm, I'm just a split of this, and the rest is just a piece of shit. You do not want to live with you anymore. This is what, what happened in, in Great Britain when they, um, they tried to utilize Earth-type Legu from Falkland in uh, um, military technologies to create uh, nanobots with a hive consciousness. So they, they basically tried to, to use the substance and embed a secondary program in it but the scientists had one big problem. They all had to face Mother Earth when they were dealing with the substance. And half of the people of the employees in this lab committed suicide. Because once being in contact with the real thing, they couldn't stand themselves anymore. So yes, even this is dangerous. Even, even meeting the friendly version. If you are not friendly, it will show you who you are. And then you might not like yourself anymore. So I, I would say any direct contact with uh, the substances is risky. This is why why we basically for for people who who have the who feel the need to work on themselves in these directions, we, we basically um, created two homeopathic remedies. Um, that bring you in contact with the signature of the things. One, one we call the black goo globally, which contain both earth type and alien type black goo, uh, which basically is the, the, the two polarities of good and evil, if you want so. And then if, if you, if you take in these globally, basically your system starts to realize where it stands. And if you're good willing, and if you take the effort to cleanse out all the dark shit in your history, in, in your epigenetics, in your life, uh, just by, by facing the two poles of good and evil and then deciding for good, it can very much help to, um, to bring you on a good path of development. It's not an easy path. You really have to face the darkness before you can let go of it. Uh, but it will bring you into very powerful developments. And we, we developed a second one. Um, actually, we did this for the autistic children because we realized it's, it's easy to heal autism on a biochemical level. Children recover physically, but one third of them doesn't come back. So they are basically lost in some astral sub-realms and they feel comfortable where they are and they will never ever, out of their own free will, would re-enter their human body, even if it's healed. And um, to help these children to come back into the body, we developed a second remedy that basically uh, closes all the gates to these astral realms and then forcing the soul to come back to the body. And this this uh, um, proved to be extremely useful to basically put an end to involvement into black magic, epigenetics, or formal life experience just by cutting off the entanglement of this real. And it's also based on on basically a knowledge about. Um, 
materials used in black magic technologies. So we could basically um, uh, create um, signatures that delete the imprint of these technologies. And uh, yes, yeah, so, so basically, there there are two possibilities: just to, to to cut all entanglements off to become human again, or to to take the full harvest um, of spiritual growth by not just en- distangling yourself, but by doing this step fully consciously. Um, to to yeah, just take home the the. Um, strongest development, spiritual development possible. And the, the second one, the one that is taking kind of the easier path is, it's called Relusinum. Re- yeah, this is, this is all very, so very fascinating. And I could just go on and on forever about this stuff, but we are approaching the end of the hour. So, Harold, first of all, I want to thank you for coming on this show. Like I said, this has been extremely fascinating, and I'm going to continue to look into this. But why don't you go ahead and just take the floor. If you want to get up on the soapbox one more time and talk about something, feel free to do that. Or if you'd like to just go ahead and plug your website and anything else that you would like to plug, feel free to go ahead and do that now. Um. Yeah, w- one thing might be helpful. Wh- whoever wants to work on himself, especially in the United States, uh, people are flooded with chemistry in their body, with the medic- wrong medications, vaccinations, bad food. And before, if, if I would be a, an average American, before targeting spiritual development, I would need to cleanse out the temple. Because you you cannot kind of expect a clearer mind if if the clear if the mind is living in a in an ocean of dirt, and uh, this requires uh, special diets. It requires organ cleansing if you are not like eighteen. It requires to fix the damage done by vaccinations and antibiotics. It requires qu- quite a, a huge measure of. Um, um yeah detoxing procedures to come back to a normal biochemistry where you can trust your own emotions and we put quite a bit of effort to find the best protocols for self cleansing and describe the um different types of disease that are uh, that they developed due to this collective poisoning of our bodies. And you can find uh, scientific literature to take. Either you just go through it yourself or you take it to your doctors for advice to understand how to treat all these uh, lifestyle disease we are facing today. And you can find these scientific papers at Aquarius-Technologies. Dot de, and then you have to kind of jump over one German term. It's Veröffentlichung, with me, which means publications, and there you find the English text as well. It's all translated to English. Um, may, maybe you find a possibility to put the link kind of on YouTube. Um, yeah, th- this is something everybody can do for himself. And you will be surprised how how a different life can be if you just do simple things in a correct way with your own body. Awesome. Well, once again, it's been a really great discussion, and I wish you a good night, and I hope to talk to you again in the future. Yeah, we, we might focus on details. I mean, this was an overview now, but if you feel like we... We've just been scratching the the surface so far. Exactly. Just the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. You have okay. A, you have a good night, my friend. You too. Great talking to you. And, uh, yeah, I hope you get the audience you deserve in the United States. Thank you. I appreciate that. 
I'll talk to you again soon. Goodbye. Okay. Bye bye. And there you have it. Wow, what a great guest. My God. You know, I usually don't do a show at this time, but I really wanted to talk to this guy. I'll be honest. I wanted to talk to him. Ever since I did the wine test and started looking into this stuff, it's been driving me nuts. It's so fascinating, and it just ties everything together. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and take a short break, play some music, and I'm going to go and take care of a few things I need to take care of, like walk behind the bushes for a second, and then I'll come back and we'll wrap up. We'll do the news, see if anybody's listening live and wants to call in, and I got some letters to read as well. Be back and be back soon. And welcome back, everybody. Thank you for joining me here on End of Days Radio. Once again, I am Daniel, your host, coming at you all the way from Seattle, Washington, home of the Seahawks. Some of you may like hearing that. Some of you may want to punch me in the face for saying that, which I totally understand, especially you uh, crazy Pittsburgh fans, you. Anyways, wow, what a great interview. You know what is so crazy about this whole thing? Once again, you see this black goo popping up in so many movies, so many TV shows. And one in particular that I forgot to mention was Marvel Comics. You guys know about the Venom suit, the black costume that Spider-Man had for a while, the symbiote. Well, it's basically the same thing. I mean, they find it in outer space. And it starts taking over Spider-Man and basically turning him evil. And then it wants to bond with him completely and actually alter his DNA and turn him into this monster sort of venom creature. It doesn't happen. The costume jumps off of Spider-Man, jumps onto Eddie Brock, and he becomes Venom. Uh, For all of you non-comic book nerds, you probably hate this. (laughs) But that's what happens. And it's so close to this reality, I just can't help but notice that as well as all these other movies there's a movie coming out soon it's going to be the sequel to prometheus it's going to be called alien covenant and i'm really excited about that i love all of the alien movies i love all the predator movies i even like aliens versus predator as bad as it was i like the franchises so much that i still watch them the best one would probably be aliens the second alien movie that actually had Tons of different aliens, as well as the whole concept of the space marines. And instead of just getting killed, the humans were actually giving back pretty good in that movie. Not to mention the huge confrontation with the queen alien at the end, which is just awesome, period. Anyways, (laughs) there's been some recent developments in my life. For example, after interviewing Seven last Saturday... He made some comments about there being some truth and validity to this whole flat earth thing. And I admit, it sparked my curiosity, and I did something that I would never have done before. I actually went on YouTube and started watching all of these flat earth proof videos and things like that. And I have to admit, they made some pretty convincing arguments. There's one video that shows this rocket being launched into the sky... And then it just stops. <laughs> like it's, it has a camera facing the ground and the rocket's going up, up, up. And then it just stops. And they're saying, look, there's a dome. That's the idea be- behind Flat Earth, by the way, that there's actually a dome that's covering the sky. Like we're in a sky dome. We're in the sky dome <laughs> or a sky dome. So there's a dome over the Earth. And they also believe that lining the Earth, surrounding the Earth, instead of there being a South Pole or Antarctica, there's actually a wall of ice that completely circles the inner landmass. So all the continents are part of this inner landmass, and there's this huge, tall ice wall that actually borders the entire world. And this explains why Antarctica has never really been explored that much. And it also explains several other weird anomalies that go on. Now, I don't believe in flat Earth. Let's get that straight right now. I'm not a flat earther. 
I'm not going to go back to the 15th century or whenever they believed in the flat earth. But I do admit there are some things that just don't add up. Like some of these pictures from space, are they really using a lens that just makes the earth look curved? When in reality, if we use a normal camera, it would look completely flat. What's up with that? Also, what's up with these NASA videos, the astronauts? I do have to admit, a lot of their gear looks very flimsy. A lot of their ships look like something that a kid would make with some tin foil and some paper mache. It's hard to believe that this stuff would stand up in the vacuum of space. There's also zero video of anybody actually entering or leaving an airlock, which is suspicious. Then you have the fact that all of these NASA guys are Freemasons. I'm sure that Gary the Mad Martian would have something to say about that. Or maybe Richard C. Hoagland is the one we need to talk to. Not that he'll ever come on the show, by the way. However, this flat earth thing, it can really mess with your head. So if you want to just go through a complete mind schism like I just did, <laughs> go on YouTube and look up some of these flat earth videos. Uh, they say things like 100% proof the earth is flat. There's also a... I think Seven might have brought this up, but there was this experiment that the Russians did where they just started digging a hole, drilling a hole, and they kept going and going. And technically, the way it's supposed to be is if you keep going into the earth, it's going to start getting hotter and hotter, and you're eventually going to start encountering magma and stuff like that. Well, the Russians went down, and things just started thinning out more and more, and eventually they just started hitting water, so go figure, there's water down there. What that means, I don't know. Maybe we're not looking at a flat earth, but some kind of hollow earth with water inside. It's really hard to tell, especially when you're just a normal person that can't afford to go in space and can't afford the equipment that it would take to drill a hole to the center of the earth. So we basically just have to trust the people that have actually been up there, being NASA and all of the commercial satellites, as well as civilians that have gone into space. We have to trust their word. I don't think that they're faking at all. For one thing, many different countries have gone into space, and if I look at the sky, I see the moon, and it's got craters on it, and those craters must have been formed by meteors, which had to come from somewhere, like space. So the whole flat Earth thing doesn't really hold up to me. Yet there's entire societies dedicated to flat earth and flat earth research. I kept looking, I kept digging, I kept looking into it, and basically what I found was these flat earthers, they make a lot of irrational arguments. They don't seem to really do a good job of proving flat earth once some skeptical-minded people come in and start asking the right questions. It just doesn't seem to hold up. Yet at the same time, there was that weird water experiment, and the fact that pilots don't have to point the nose of the plane downward as they circle the Earth. But then again, there could be a lot of other, a lot of other explanations for this stuff. Why am I talking about flat Earth? I sound like an idiot. <laughs> I got to get Wolfman on here. You guys remember Wolfman? Flat Earth heads, that song he sings. My God, this is a perfect time for that song. Oh, boy. Okay, so... We do have some news stories in the works. One is from a website called conbinny.com. And this is an article saying that the people that made the movie Paranormal Activity, they're going to produce a new series about paranormal sort of phenomena. And that's kind of interesting. I don't know. I've never seen Paranormal Activity. I don't know what it is. At some point, I just started to become completely disinterested in scary movies. Like I just figured it wasn't worth the fright. <laughs> I did go through a period when I was younger when I was all about horror movies, all about scary movies. And I still do like horror movies. But I tend to like the ones with monsters, with Jason Voorhees or... Michael Myers, as opposed to ghosts, because I'll be honest, ghosts kind of scare the shit out of me. I might be able to handle a slasher flick, but a movie like Poltergeist or The Ring or Event Horizon basically makes me soil my drawers. 
basically makes me let loose a big fat dookie that should not be in my underpants. So I tend to stay away from those types of movies. Yet when they get super popular, we all got to see them, right? Poltergeist was scary. I think it was. That's an underrated scary flick. I mean, you've got a clown, a clown doll. I hate dolls and I hate clowns. And I really hate clown dolls that hide under the bed and grab you. It's got a freaking tree that eats people. It's got skeletons. It's got a freaking skeleton face bat demon thing with a pointy nose that comes out of a portal. That's some scary shit, right? Also, the little girl gets sucked into the TV. And even that that woman that has the ESP, the psychic medium, she's kind of scary. The way she goes, y'all hang back now, you're jamming my frequency. You remember that part? Pretty funny, right? I've also heard a lot of strange paranormal sort of things are connected to that movie, but we'll save that for another day. <coughs> okay, next story. This comes from the irishtimes.com. Apparently, somebody is doing a art gallery where they are setting up these experiments that researchers and scientists in the past used to try to prove some form of psychic ability. And there's also other displays in this art project that show that show other paranormal research, like the discovery of ectoplasm. This is really interesting to me because I suppose this is considered a form of modern art, but I like the fact that this is modern art that actually educates people on things like ectoplasm. And for those of you that don't know, ectoplasm is this mysterious substance that gets left behind by ghosts. So there actually has been physical evidence of ghosts in the past, contrary to the beliefs of many who think there's no evidence whatsoever of the paranormal or anything like that. That's bullshit. So this stuff, ectoplasm, it seems to come from another dimension. It's very mysterious. We don't know what it is, but it shows up, and there have been studies on it. I think this art project is cool. If you're interested in it, you might want to look it up. That way you can actually go see this thing. And the page is not opening for me, so I can't give you any more details. Isn't that convenient? <laughs> so you might want to Google that. Paranormal Art Project, Paranormal Telepathy, telepathy Ectoplasm, Poltergeist. You'll find it. All right. And, you know, another thing that I think is very important for me to talk about is my new attitude. In the past, I would kind of be in character on the show. Like, I would, if any female came on the show, I'd act really perverted and try to kind of flirt with her and give her all kinds of attention. I'm not going to do that anymore. The number one reason is usually they don't deserve it. I don't even know who I'm talking to. <laughs> and the other thing is it's come to my awareness that this world is entirely full of perverts. There seems to be a pervert around every corner. And women especially know this because they're constantly getting bombarded by perverted behavior of males. It's pretty normal. However, I decided that I kind of want to be the exception. Because there's already a million perverts out there. So I'm going to try to be a little bit more of a gentleman. It's just something that I've decided. Something I've decided to do on this show, and in my personal life, to an extent. <laughs> okay, um, this isn't going to be a long show, first of all. This is a special edition, so I'm not going to go on and on, because I am tired. <laughs> but I do have a few other things I want to talk about. <laughs> One thing in particular, I have some letters from readers letters from listeners, fans. Uh, I want to keep doing this every show. I want to read some feedback at the end, just so you guys know that I'm listening to you, that I'm taking your feedback into consideration. And that way, sometimes your letters and comments will get on air. And if you don't want 
me to read any of this feedback on air. Just specify in your email. Don't read this on air. This is for your eyes only. Okay, so first one, it comes from a gentleman named Snip Daddy. S-N-I-P Daddy. Snip Daddy. He says, Daniel, what are your top three favorite movies? Good question. I think that I actually have probably answered this question in the past, but I will answer it again since I was asked. Obviously, my all-time favorite movie is The Matrix, just like we were told earlier by the guest, I believe The Matrix to be nonfiction. I believe it to be a completely true story, down to the smallest elements. I think that that is a pretty accurate model of reality, because that's what we're dealing with. We're in a matrix, and it might be a matrix inside of another matrix. It might be that the matrix isn't entirely good or evil, but we are definitely inside some kind of matrix. And there does seem to be a high amount of this weird technology, whether it's alien technology or whatever it is. It does seem that we are surrounded by some very advanced tech. And it also seems that there are aliens possibly involved, which we don't see in the matrix. And there are also artificial intelligences involved as well as, what was the last one? Oh, magic. There seems to be magic and sorcery involved. So there's a lot of mystery out there. And that's kind of what this show is trying to do. It's trying to delve into the mystery and be one with the mystery. There's a saying that you should be one with the mystery at all times. I don't know what that means, but it kind of makes sense. (laughs) So let's be at one with the mystery. My second favorite movie, and this might surprise you guys, It's actually Goodfellas, the classic gangster flick. The classic gangster flick that is probably the best gangster flick that there ever has been. A lot of you guys are going to say The Godfather or The Godfather 2. I disagree. I would go with Goodfellas. I think that it's better on every level than The Godfather. The Godfather is up there. It's definitely in my top 10. But I'm a Goodfellas guy. I mean, come on. That performance by Joe Pesci, that scene where he beats the guy to death for laughing at him and telling him to shine his shoes or go get a shine box, that's classic. I don't think anything in The Godfather really compares to that. Or that laugh that Ray Liotta does, that, (laughs) I mean, that's genius. Whoever thought of that, genius. That laugh alone, absolutely. Okay. Oh, this is a weird question. Daniel, do you have any pets, and do you ever make love to them? From Amelia. That's gross. I don't know if some of you guys are just sending me goofy questions to get a reaction on air or what, but that is nasty. I do have pets, and I do love them, but no, nothing like that going on up here. I am not from Arkansas. (laughs) There was a guy who lived close to me. His name was Kenneth Pinion, and you guys might remember him being in the news many years back for having relations with his horse, or a horse. I don't know if it was his horse. And the guy actually suffered from a completely ruptured rectum, and he bled to death in the hospital. I don't want to end up like that guy, nor am I attracted to animals at all. I do not understand how anybody could be that sick in the head to actually cross that line. I think that there's a million other things that aren't as bad as that, um, except being into kids or, or something really bad like that. That's kids are worse than animals, but animals are pretty bad. For one thing, an animal should not be sexy to a human being. That's ridiculous. You must be such a horny pervert that pretty much any warm hole will do you right. Unless you're actually attracted to like a monkey's fur or (laughs) the shape of its shape of its abdomen or something like that. It just doesn't make sense. I mean, is anybody really attracted to a sheep or a pig or are they just so horny and perverted that they have to go with any warm hole they can find. I think it's probably the latter, but who am I to say? There might be some kind of 
DNA thing going on there. Maybe some of these people have have reptilian parts in their brain or something like that so it's, that is causing them to want to do that. But I believe that something like that is completely morally wrong because an animal can't give its consent. So it's like raping an animal. It's disgusting. It shouldn't be illegal. It should be banned in any country uh, as well as any sort of torture or abuse of animals. I mean, if there's any, I'm a pretty peaceful guy, but if there's anything that would make me want to actually physically fight somebody, it's if I see an animal or a child being abused. That's like the one thing where I will put my dukes up. (laughs) But that's it. I mean, even if I see a woman getting hit, I'm not necessarily going to step in because I know a lot of those relationships, if you step in the middle of them, the woman will actually turn around and start attacking you. So I would rather in advance not get myself involved. I might call the cops or say, hey, what's, what's your problem? Knock that off but I'm not going to step in and try to be a hero because like I said, usually women that are in relationships like that, it's not that they necessarily like it. It's just that they are stuck in a cycle of violence and abuse and they need to take steps to leave that person because there's not always going to be someone there to come to the rescue. And like I said, most of the time they turn on you. They turn around and they start coming after you and going, I love him, but I love him. Break up with him. No, I love him. I love You love him. He's hitting you. No, I love him. You, you guys know what I'm talking about, right? That I love him shit. No, you don't love him. <laughs> He's bad. Okay. Uh, wanted to talk a little bit about electronic music. A lot of people hate electronic music. Everybody likes different types of music. Some people like heavy metal. Some people like country music. Some people like rap. Some people like Taylor Swift. Some people like Kanye West. I don't really think that way anymore. I used to think that way back in high school. Like, I would be like, oh, it's got to be this type of music. Oh, I don't, I hate country. Country's for dorks. You got to be hick to like country. I don't have any problem with country anymore. I think country's freaking awesome. I try to play some country-like songs on the guitar. I respect it for the form of music that it is. I'm not into bashing music or cultures or anything like that. I admire the American South, the American West. I admire that culture, and I admire country-Western music. It's not my favorite, but I don't hate it. I'm not biased. I don't discriminate against that type of music or rap or rock or heavy metal, but... I acknowledge the fact that everybody is going to have their own taste. And if you play some heavy metal, you're going to turn off the hip hop heads. If you play the hip hop, you're going to turn off the metal heads. If you play, if you play Nirvana, people are going to hate Nirvana because Nirvana ruined hair metal of the eighties and it destroyed rock music. And I, I mean, I think that's ridiculous. I love Nirvana. Same thing goes with uh, bands like Limp Biscuit or Korn. A lot of people hate Fred Durst. They want to kill him. I think he's incredibly talented. I think Limp Bizkit is a great band. Yet some people, you cannot even say that that band is good without them biting your head off. <laughs> I don't get that. I, I mean, Wes Borland, the great guitarist. Fred Durst has a great voice. I don't understand the hate. Likewise, I don't understand why some people hate Eminem. I think Eminem's probably the best rapper that there ever has been. That's going to piss some people off especially people that don't like the idea of a white guy being the best rapper, but that's my opinion. I think he's the best. I think that his lyrics are the best. I think that his songs are the best. That's just my opinion. And I have, don't think that it's because I haven't been exposed to much rap because really I have, and I wouldn't put any other white guy even on that list with the exception of Vinnie Paz from Jedi mind tricks. He would be on that list as well. But but nobody else. All the other guys would be black guys, of course. Uh, okay, um, I had some other notes here of stuff I wanted to talk about, but I think I'll save it for tomorrow. You guys know we're on again tomorrow, right? <laughs> we're going every day. Well, we're not going every day, but <laughs> for, for whatever reason, I booked like four different shows this week. I'm going to be so tired. But this is just so exciting, I can't stop. It's so fun, and this information is so important, I just can't stop. So I'm going to keep going. 
And I'll see you guys here tomorrow at, excuse me, 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And until then, of course, remember to subscribe to the show on all of those various services out there. We're on all of them. Remember to check out ninjashoes.net if you like pro wrestling or MMA. If you, oh, one thing I need to bring up is the website does not have a contact us link anymore because people were using that and it was getting sent to my spam folder, which is super annoying. So what you got to do now is go to the about me and get my email off of there and just send me an email directly because I want to make sure I get your emails. I don't like losing your emails and then finding them three months later and thinking, oh my God, somebody wanted to come on the show or this person had a great idea. And yes, we are getting to a point with this show where people are coming to me, meaning I don't really have to ask people. There's people that are constantly asking to come on the show. So it's getting booked up really bad and I'm having to be a little bit choosy, but I don't want to be choosy. I just try to make the time for anybody that has something to say. So I'm going to keep working hard. This is hard work. There's not a whole lot of other people doing this, not at this level of quality, not at this level of length and commercial free, blah, 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 all the stuff I usually say. There's a few guys out there that I respect and admire. You got your Clyde Lewis's, your John B. Wells, your Greg Harwoods. You've got your, you've got your Amy's and your Heather's. <laughs> couple of hotties. Oh, damn it. I wasn't going to do that anymore. What's wrong with me? You got your George Norrie. Just kidding. George Norrie sucks. <laughs> Poor George. He gets so much shit from everybody. I just saw a new thread on Belgab. And guess what it's about? It's about how much George Norrie sucks. And I, I was sure to throw my two cents in there. <laughs> And of course, shout out to Belgab, all of you guys over there. Shout out to all, shout out to everybody. Shout out to all those communities out there, all the people that are aware of the show and following it. Shout out to all of you badasses out there in the trenches fighting this war, this info war, this war of knowledge and enlightenment and understanding, fighting against the dark forces of darkness and contempt, the black goo, the alien black goo, symbiote demon goo, demon poo. Shout out to all the people out there that are fighting the good fight. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Until then, good night. Or I guess it's the middle of the day, but good night anyways. King has returned from the broken ruins of Babylon. This is the end of day.